In a previous video we looked at landing at Nice at runway 04 left. The advantage of landing at Nice is that runway 04 left is 8,000 feet long. But what do we do when we're landing on a runway that is significantly shorter than that? Than that? In this instance we're going to be looking at landing at Lesignon Corbier. I think it's runway 26. This has a runway length of 3,200 feet, so it's less than half the runway length at Nice. In this first attempt, we're going to be using approach flaps and an approach speed of about 100 miles per hour. That's the same approach technique that we used at Nice. And just to recap on how we landed at Nice, the in point is the numbers at the threshold. At the end point we're beginning the round out. So we're flaring the aircraft, reducing power, then adding power to prevent excessive sink. So in this approach we are pretty much dead center, right down the middle. Speed is where we are looking for it to be about 95 to 100 miles per hour adjusting for center line now on at Nice we can land a little bit long we can just concentrate on getting a smooth landing but in this instance when we land a little bit long the consequences are a little more serious. As you can see, we're pretty much right down the centre line, reaching roundouts, starting to flare. Just taking a little bit of time to get it down and touch down. So that is a pretty good landing, and at Nice, you'll be happy with that nice and smooth touchdown. Now you see at this point we're about 12 miles an hour faster than we are in the second attempt which does have a significant impact and we run out of runway. Now you could say that in that first attempt we could have used a lot more brake, we could have just stood on the brake to stop it and maybe that would have worked but it's not an ideal solution. It certainly wouldn't do the wheels much good. The tyres would, would be pretty worn after such heavy braking. This time we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to be using full flaps and what that does of course is it reduces the stall speed so we can approach and land significantly slower. Look at the speedometer, there's a red line that marks essentially the stall speed. We can now approach right at that level and still have control. The procedure is going to be exactly the same. In point is the numbers. An important point to bear in mind is you have to be very precise with your in point. You have to hit your in point, be it your round out point at the in point. So we're looking for a pretty standard 500 FPM descent. Now we don't want to be having to dive down to achieve the in point. So obviously if we dive down we're going to increase airspeed. So we want to keep it nice and smooth, nice and even, 500 feet FPM descent. If we can't make that aim point properly and at a controlled airspeed then the best choice is to go around. And here we are close to centre line, not quite, but this time we're going to get the aircraft down a little bit quicker. Round out, power back, power added, touchdown. Now this time I'm going to 
pull back on the controls the idea being that I want to extend the elevator to try to create a little bit more drag still going to need to brake a little bit in order to make the rather tight right turn at the end of the runway but this time we just about manage to do it in a controlled way and we're in much better shape to take the right turn to exit the taxiway so it's a good idea to challenge yourself with a shorter landing so that you're not just perfecting the technique the flare and the touchdown at a low FPM but you're also doing it on a short runway feel free to like comment and subscribe